What's going on, everyone? Hope you all had a great St. Paddy's Day yesterday, but it's time to work off that hangover and get back down to the ice. It's Puck You. We're back here on March 18th. I'm Mike Burns. I got Les Victory over here with me. We're going to navigate a real small card tonight. Les, how was your green beer yesterday, brother? How many did you have? I only had one, and I honestly thought it wasn't even St. Patrick's Day. I didn't even realize it till I saw a commercial coming on of uh, someone showing the Chicago River being green. I was like, oh, shit, that's today. Oh, well, we're watching hockey. doesn't matter. So quick little recap on the weekend. Bernsey, what a weekend. I got a ton of messages from subscribers, you know, showing their love for the kind of weekend we had. We had a our, our very first ever cherry picker super max bet on Saturday. The name's going to stick. I came up with it all on my own. <laughs> and if for those that people that don't know what a cherry picker is and how it's related to hockey, I'll just give you the quick 10 second definition of it. So basically a cherry picker in hockey is somebody that hangs out at the far blue line, hoping a puck gets kind of chipped off the glass and they go on a breakaway to score. That's what a cherry picker is. So it's kind of suitable for us. I mean, we like edges, we like cherry picking and we love cherries. So expect to see a lot more of those cherry picker bets coming in over the next couple of weeks. Had a really big night Saturday, clean sweep, Carolina. What a game that was. Hey, yeah. did you watch that Bernsey? Like to see them down two goals with three minutes left. They were done. You would think they were. And I'm like, fuck, you know, that's that's too bad. I saw this going differently. I saw Samsonov get hurt in the Instagram video. I'm like, oh, he's not playing. Bulls going in. You know, we're gonna we're gonna dump some money on Carolina. And then I saw Samsonov, and then I'm like, what the fuck? Is this just a show? Like, what how do you like he could barely stand up? He had to almost be carried off the ice, and now you're game ready. Anyways, whatever. It doesn't matter. Carolina pulls it out. Two goals with an empty net with three. Three minutes left. Kill off a penalty in overtime. I thought yeah. that was like, oh, fuck. You know, that's too bad. We're going to lose like this now. But kill it off. And then guess who for the winner in the shootout? It was fitting, man. It was fitting. It was it was good. And then yesterday, another big night. We actually had more games yesterday on the card than a Saturday, which is kind of weird for us. You know, there was actually seven games in the NHL on a Sunday, which isn't all that common. But we had... Big Vegas taking down your devils. That was that was our biggest bet of the night. It hit. The Anaheim team total under two and a half. Again, I feel like we've played this card about six times now this season, and it's cashed yeah, every probably time. Probably pay for the rest of the year. Yeah, and you know, expect to see more of those bets going forward. Uh, Barzell, we had him under points. He's been cold. Uh, we did lose the Brock Nelson one, but we also did cash that bacon parlay. Carolina and Chicago uh, parlayed up. Got the win there. Another big night. Big weekend. Looking for more Burns. Another big week coming up here. And then this is crunch time in the NHL. Like this is the week who you could officially, I think the Ducks officially got eliminated from the playoffs last night with that loss. So this is moving week. We could see teams get eliminated. Teams get closer. If you're a hockey fan, it's going to be a good week. 100% crunch time, man. And we got a little crunch time game. Coming up for you tonight, we're going to start off with the Washington Capitals coming into the coming into Calgary to take on the Flames. Capitals are going to be road dogs here at minus 115. Flames minus 135. Favorites over under here set at six. I mean, for, for me, as far as Calgary goes, man, I mean, it just, it all depends on what team shows up. You know, what kind of team is going to want to want to play here? Um, I, they're six points out of a playoff spot. They're not going to be making it in. But they still go on these stupid little streaks, man. You know, I mean, they sold off all their big pieces. And we finally thought, okay, all the boys are out. They lose three ugly, ugly games in a row by an average of four goals. We were ready to stick a fork in them, or at least I was. That's it. They finally folded. They finally crumbled. And then they win fucking two in a row, scoring nine goals in those two games and only giving up three. Yeah, you said it. And I think everybody's kind of written off the Calgary Flames by now, myself included. You know, Markstrom's hurt. I don't know what I think of that, but uh, you know, I'm sure maybe he is. Uh, but I, you just feel like it's like, you know what? I'm I'm going to reduce my playing time now so that I stay healthy because I'm probably going to get moved in the offseason. I think Calgary understands that they're probably not going to get in. They're just running out of time. Uh, 
But with that being said, yeah, they, uh, I mean, they beat Montreal. So whatever that's worth. And they only, they only had 28 shots on net. So Montreal either gets a shutout or they give up five. And that game, it was the, the, the latter. So, um, interestingly enough though, is, is Calgary, uh, Calgary's goalie Wolf is, is kind of a good story. Like he, he, he's, he's won, what was it? Best goalie of the HL two years in a row. Two time goalie of the year. Two time goalie of the year. So Calgary's going to be kind of leaning on him going forward, you know, whether they keep Markstrom or not. And, and he's been pretty good. I mean, we don't know a lot about him because of how new he is, but I watched a couple of Calgary's Calgary games when he's in there and he's, he's very smooth. He, he's, you know, he went on a, a little bit, he had a little bit of a rough, I don't know, 2024. I think he lost three or four and gave up you know, a bunch and had a tough time cracking the 900 save percentage. But now I don't know if it's just because there's maybe not as much pressure because they're not really chasing the playoffs. But the past two games, he's 966 and 947. You know, those are really, really, really good numbers. Now, I don't know if it's going to be sustainable for him. It's hard to say, but this is a great matchup for him because. Washington struggles to get pucks on net. They only, they average 23 shots on net and they're liable 10. Like that's fucking terrible. How does that even happen? Uh, you know, I, I cannot, I can't understand that. So with that being said, Washington's coming off for, uh, you know, continuing this long road stand. They played four games on the road. This is game number five on the road. They did beat Vancouver, which was on our underdog better than night. The other night, Bernsey throw that out but it's got to start to catch up to these guys they played the 11th the 13th back to back to the 14th a day off played against vancouver squeaked out a win there and now a day off and now they're playing again right so you got to think that a team that doesn't play all that well on the road you know they're 15 and 19 on the road you got to think that this is this could be a tough spot for washington to come out with a win here I do like Kadri. Kadri shots. The guy's been lighting it up. And I think if Calgary does beat them, I think it's going to be a big part of Nazem Kadri. So if you want a free prop bet, I think the line's at three and a half shots. I would eat that up. Well, listen, man. I mean, believe it or fucking not, the Caps are one point out of a playoff spot. One fucking point. They win tonight. And they jump over those dog shit Detroit Red Wings who we fucking buried last week. I mean, listen, this is, yes, I understand. They're on a long road trip and they're full of veterans. And these guys may have some heavy legs. But I think these guys really are going to look at this game and say, boys, boys, we can get to the show here. We can get in. This is a big, big W. And I know that we've gotten burned with like that whole ex-girlfriend kind of mentality of like, oh, you know, she's changed, right? And we've chased these spots, you know, or at least I have chased these spots in the past. You know, I've been burned by my, my mu- oh, this is a must-win game for the devil, so they're going to win. This is a must-win game for the Islanders, so they're going to win. We fucking said it was a must-win game for Detroit when they got fucking rolled by Buffalo. So I... I- yeah, apparently they don't have the same urgency as we do. We believe like, holy man, <laughs> if I was a Detroit player right now, like I'm in the lot of boys, like this is it. We got to fucking come up and show up and that they don't show up. I, I don't know. We throw that mentality out the window now because apparently it, it doesn't fucking matter. Well, with I'm that still being said, though, like, yes, money line. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Charlie Lindgren, though, he's been pretty good for for Washington as of late. His last ten games, he's got an above average save percentage at at point nine one, and he's averaging almost twenty nine saves a game. So you're looking for a prop bet on on him. Uh, I think that number is around twenty six and a half or twenty seven and a half for saves. Could be interesting. To, to, to see as I'm expecting Calgary to be a lot more energized. I'm expecting Calgary to, ha- you know, maybe own the old zone a little bit more, which could result in more shots. Uh, I think because of the long road trip, Washington could be a little tired and they may get caught, you know, water skiing behind some of the, you know, the Calgary guys and, and ended up in the box. 
or just, you know, the mental exhaustion often turns into penalties and, and simple mistakes. I think this is this could be a good spot for Lindgren to see a lot of rubber. So if you wanted to look at the save total saves for uh, for Lindgren, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Well, I mean, one thing Calgary does do consistently is they do score. They fire the fucking puck, man. On the season, they average 3.44 goals per game. The last 10, 3.15. I mean, this team, it, they're, I mean, they're just fucking weird, man. Like, you know, they, they come out and they average 0.7 goals for in the first period. Um, 1.3 in the second, 1.6 in the third, but defensively, they average giving up 0.8 goals in the first period, 2.10 in the second period, and then down to 0.7 in the fucking third. It's like this. They get off to a hot start, and then they fucking forget what everybody's doing. They lose control, and then the third, they're like, oh, yeah, we got to play hockey again, and they get back to it. And the cat, the yeah. second period for the Caps is actually their strongest part of the fucking game. So you could totally see Calgary, you know, being up after the first period, getting the bed in the second and going into the third period to try to like, you know, like get back in it and just firing pucks from everywhere. So over shots, when you're behind, all you do is shoot the puck. Definitely. And especially when you're defending against a lead, if Calgary gets up, they're going to be defending. They're going to be, you know, much more reserved, which is going to give up more zone time to Washington because entries are going to be easier. Calgary's pressing. It, it won't be as much. There won't be pinching, you know, just shit like that. All, all to consider when you're looking at these kind of bets. So with that being said, yeah, you know, a big part of the reason why Washington is no good in the first is because they don't get fucking shots on net. <laughs> so, you know, if you want to take the money line on Calgary in the first period, I could see them being up one nothing. 2 nothing, 2 1. I could see Calgary winning that first period. So also not a not a terrible not a terrible bet to make when you know the proof is there. Washington cannot get pucks on net in the first. You can't get pucks on net, you're not fucking scoring, Bernsey. Well, listen, man, I mean, somebody in the East has to figure out what they're doing with these last two spots. I mean, you know, to wake up and see Cal- Cal- Washington, you know, one point out, you know, is just fucking mind blowing to me, especially when my team's fucking seven points out. But <laughs> Seven, All right, twenty, uh, whatever. We're going on an eleven-two run. Here we go. All right, the only <laughs> other game we got on the schedule tonight, we got Buffalo taking on the Crackheads in Seattle. Uh, this is basically a straight pick 'em game. Uh, over under set up low here at five and a half. Now let's let's start with Buffalo. They're five, four, and one with the under cashing seven times in their last ten games. They had a nice stretch of three games. They knocked off Edmonton. They knocked off Detroit like we fucking told them, you know, said before, you know, buried those assholes and the Isles. Scored 14 goals during that stretch, only gave up five. Um, but, you know, the Detroit last game out did get some underdog revenge, you know, winning four to one on Saturday. What, what do you what do you first see with this Buffalo team tonight? So last week they had a big week, right? They, they, won, they won a couple games. They look good. And uh, you look at the standings and holy fuck, they're – Five points away from Detroit. Pittsburgh's five points away from Detroit with two games at hand. One for the Wings. Like the East isn't done. Not even close. It's not done. As much as we want to believe, I mean, Tampa should get in. They they've got mm-hmm. some room between uh, you know, Detroit, but 69, 68, even your devils. It's it's not over, Bernsey. If you if you pray every night, there's a chance. I got to spend and a month in confession. I, you know, it's it's funny because I don't know how many how many guys I've been listening to over the weekend. Why wouldn't the Devils go out and get Jake Allen earlier? <laughs> he is the answer. And I'm like, He's what the, the answer. fuck are you guys talking about? Look at his stats. He was terrible in Montreal. Why is why would he all of a sudden be good now? Anyway, we got the just, best version of him. Total fucking squirrel moment there, but I just I can't. <laughs> I, I meant to t- talk to you about that earlier. Like, I, I don't understand. What are they seeing that the stats aren't saying? Because the stats say that he wasn't very good in Montreal. And he was pretty good last night. I think he should have had the Eichel, the Eichel goal. Yeah, that was, you know, that that's, was that's a little soft. Um, but anyways, back to, back to this Buffalo team. 
they're right in it. And the, the crazy part is, is when you look at the stats, you got Tampa in the first wild card, Detroit in the second wild card, all with plus goal differential. Everybody else is red. Washington is the next one. They have a minus 30. Ugh, ugly. How are they even in the conversation of making the playoffs? The Islanders minus 20. I don't understand how you could be almost in the playoffs with a minus 30 goal differential. Now, Buffalo minus one, you know, technically they should be in a wild card spot. Same with Pittsburgh. They got a minus two. It's just weird. It's a weird stat that you see green, green, and then everybody out of the playoffs, all red. But is this going to be one of those one of those ex-girlfriend moments again where it's like, oh, Buffalo has a chance. You know, Seattle's done. They're not getting in. Buffalo is a huge game for them. They must win this game. Yeah, but we've said that all last week to teams that then they show up flatter than a fucking my heart rate after I lose a bet. And like, it's, it's, it's terrible. And now you can't say, okay. Yeah. You could say it. Seattle's hundred percent not getting in. I just yeah, pulled it up. That, that, that. Sales. You're right. But people are still fighting for their jobs. They do mm-hmm. have a couple games at hand. So technically if they won the next two, that would bring them even that put them at 72 points. They're still seven out. You know what I want to see Bernsey? Talk to me. I want to see Vegas not make it. I like Something. Vegas. I think I love the team. You don't I, sound like it. I I I do. I I like. So, okay, you're right. I don't fucking like Vegas. You know, I like the city. I like going there. I've been there fucking ten times. But as far as the hockey team goes, they're just not a good team to watch right now. They're just oh my god. They don't deserve it. I'll be surprised if they don't make it. But I'd like to see them not make it. So if they not make it, who's making it? Is it Calgary? Is Calgary somehow gonna gonna, gonna fucking squeeze their way in there? St. Louis? I mean, they beat the Ducks. Who cares? But it's the same thing in in the West. The two teams that are in the playoff spot in the wild card plus goal differential. Everybody else red. <laughs> so it's it's just an interesting stat, and I take this stat very much with a grain of salt because obviously there's not a lot of significance in it. It's just interesting to look at. And when we look at this Buffalo game, yeah, it's a must win for Buffalo, but here's the thing. There's still what? 16, 15 games left. Every fucking game is a must win. So does that mean they're going to win 15 in a row? No, they aren't. Seattle's own Buffalo over their lifespan since they come in the NHL. They're five and oh, they haven't, they haven't lost to them once. And only one of those games was, a, was a one goal game. Yeah, they over crushed four out of those five games. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, UPL has been good, but at the end of the day, it's still that same team up front. What happens if he's not good? Are you going to get the goal support to make up for it? Okay, sure. You put up seven on Detroit, which is a fucking bottom feeder as far as I'm concerned right now. Are you going to be able to do that against a team that has been very good defensively for the most part of the year? Not so much recently, but for the most part of the year, Seattle is all about goaltending and defense. Well, this, I, I see a lot of similarities in these teams. You know, uh, consistent goal scoring does not come from really either of them. Um, you know, they both have strong blue lines. I mean, I really like that addition that that Buffalo made with Bo Byram. Um, he's He's been strong back there. He's actually been putting, putting the puck around, getting some points. Uh, he's had in the five games that he's played five, uh, five points, three goals, two assists. I got my eye on him for an anytime point tonight. Um, but I mean, it, for me, it just comes down to who the goalies are going to be. You know, what's it going to come down to? I don't think anyone's going to be really, you know, I mean, Buffalo doesn't play a consistent five on five. One thing they do do is they do score in the fucking power play. Right. So they're at 31% right now, just about over these last 10 games, you know, so that's where all their action has been really coming. So if Seattle stays out of the box. Decord plays the way that Decord's supposed to play, right? It's Decord, Decord tonight, not Grubauer. Decord's as of right, likely. Yeah, as of right now. So, I mean, I can definitely see this being the second time these two met up and the under coming out. Um, I know it's a low number with that five and a half, but I, I just don't see consistency that's going to tell me that pucks are going to go in the net. 
the part of the problem that Seattle's had is is their penalty kill hasn't been that great either. And Buffalo's power play has been good. You know, they've given up a power play goal three games in a row now. You know, it's not terrible, but it's going to be tough to win if you if you can't keep the puck out of your net on on the special team. So, uh, I don't know. It's kind of a weird. It's it's a weird one here, Bernsey, because. Buffalo has shown life of scoring. I hate that five and a half line. I'd much yeah. rather take the under on the six. So if you want to consider buying that up, just it'll probably be six and a half. It probably won't be six, but you're gonna you're gonna definitely pay for it. But uh I do like the under. I could see this being like a three one kind of game, a four one kind of game. Uh it's just kind of the games that Seattle's been playing. But the one thing that Seattle has struggled with all year is scoring goals. And you look at their last few games, they scored one. They scored one the night before. They scored four against Vegas, but everybody's Yay. scoring four against Vegas. Not the Devils. <laughs> and uh, they got shut up by Winnipeg, right? So you got... Average, you, average 2.2 goals the last 10. Terrible. Terrible. Uh, you're not going to you're not going to win. You're not going to win like that, especially against a hot goalie like Buffalo's had. UPL's been good. Uh, he's been, he's been really good. So hot goalie can't score. It's Maybe a keep an eye on a Seattle spot. two and a half under. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It, it's not a terrible idea. It's not a terrible idea because typically Buffalo is better at home than they're on the road. You know, wow. I mean, they're, they're just not good. Like they're, they're somehow in the playoff talk because of their recent, but this is what Buffalo does. Buffalo shits the bed all year. Oh, they only missed the playoffs by four points. And then yeah, we'll talk about them next season. This is the one that's going to get them over the hump. And it's the same fucking bullshit. It's the over same story. It's like, oh, the, you, you missed it by four points. Well, we had to win the last 10 games in a row to fucking be <laughs> out by four points. You know, that's what people don't understand. Like they're so close. We're right there. No, you're not. No, you're not. And this year is not going to be any different. Buffalo's not getting in, whether you like it or not. I mean, Seattle's not a very good team either. I expected them to be a lot better this year. I thought they had a really good story last year with Grubauer kind of standing on his head. It's just a tough spot. It's it's a tough spot. I like to believe that this is going to be a goalie matchup. <sighs> but you just don't know. You, it's It's tough. Seattle takes a couple penalties. Buffalo goes out on the power play. I mean, they can crush this fucking number in just three opportunities. I mean, it's not crazy to say Buffalo can't go three for three on three power play opportunities the way that Seattle's been defending on the penalty kill. So that's why people are going to have to get out there less, and they're going to have to buy the card to find out where we're finally standing on this thing, right? We got our week passes going out at 99. All right, our Canadian bacon's been running red hot. Make sure you check us out on Telegram, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, especially. Uh, we're right down here in the home stretch. Playoffs are right around the corner. What do you got for the guys tonight, Les? We've been crushing March, Bernsey. Absolutely. We're, I, I think we're up 20% return on our investment just in March alone. Like it's it's been it's been a big week. It's been a big month, and we, we're gonna keep it going. Like we got a couple weeks left to March. I like to keep my statistics every month. We kind of do a review, not every day, because you're not gonna win every day. But on the long game, this is a long game, and we preach this every fucking every time we're on the air here, and people need to understand that that this is this is a long game, units per game. There's a recipe. There's a reason why we we give games thirty x, hundred x, fifty x. There's a reason why. So you stick to the system, you're gonna make money. That's just been the story of the NHL season all year. We got all kinds of stuff happening in this channel coming up. So you want to follow in telegram to make sure that you're staying on top of all the free picks and all the stuff that we give out. All right, guys, we'll be back here with another one tomorrow. Big calendar tomorrow. Going to have a lot of games for you. You guys take care of yourself for less victory. I'm Mike Burns. We'll see you all tomorrow. <laughs>